listening to you speak, I'm wondering whether the defence industry might get a bit concerned that the trajectory that 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 the industry is on subsequent to the 2016 white paper it, it might be adjusted. Uh, I mean, should industry be concerned, or should they look at this to, as uh, as possible opportunity? Oh, I think uh, I, I think there is absolutely an abundance of potential opportunity, um, and. Uh, um, Nothing, nothing is a done deal ever, really, uh, in this game. Th projects have started and been turned off, although not very often. And that's one of the key considerations, I think, that for the government to, to and defence itself to take into account is, you know, at, at what point does it make sense to look at this project that's consuming a large amount of money in, in an environment where the money will always be limited, um, and say, so, well, that's actually not going to do what we need it to do, and we're going to stop that, and we're going to go this way instead. Um, and that's happened a couple of times, but it's not really common. So the first one I would say point to was the Super Sea Sprite project, which was, we changed course there largely because it didn't look like that project was going to work. And so we canned it after uh, a very significant spend, well over a billion dollars, um, and we're left with no capability at all. So that was a billion dollars? Wasted? Sunk, yep. Um, well, uh, yes, essentially. The, then the other example, which is perhaps more pertinent, is the um, acquisition of the Super Hornets after the F-111s were retired and at a time when the Joint Strike Fighter, which was to replace all of them, uh, the, the Hornets and the F-111s, to get to that place the Air Force really wanted to be of having only a single platform, which is a much simpler logistic uh, and sustainment problem and therefore can be done more cost effectively than having two different platforms. Um, the Joint Strike Fighter kept slipping out to the right and so Plan B became acquiring um, Super Hornets, which ultimately brought with it an additional buy of Super Hornets uh, with an electronic warfare capability. Now that's a significant additional capability for Air Force. But in a sort of gap filler sense, it just made a whole bunch of sense. Now, Joint Strike Fighter is coming, uh, and I think we, should, we, we can have every confidence that it'll be as good as everybody hopes eventually. Um, it's perhaps not quite there yet, but it's not bad. So um, these things do change, and they, they should change. We should not be in a position where we are so wedded to any particular pathway that we just keep going down it, even if it's going to deliver something which is irrelevant in the circumstances we can see unfolding. We don't have the funds to be able to, to, to justify doing that, in my view. Um, so I industry should look at, at what the risks are from their point of view, and I'm sure they do. Um, you know, industry is, is principally about preserving their profit and doing really well what it is they do to get to that profit. I mean, let's not make it all about it's only money driven, it's not. They do what they do and, and they're very good at what they do and in the process they make a profit that makes it viable and it has to be. <clears throat> but there are risks to that and I'm sure that any, any um, industry player worth its salt as a company will be looking at those risks all the time. And equally, the circumstances of change that we're seeing that I've been talking about do offer the potential for significant opportunities for Australian industry. And in the self-sufficiency sense, in the more self-reliant sense that, that I'm talking about, those industry players, especially those that are Australian companies, become that much more critically important in the national security context. They really do. Because they, whilst they might well, you know, take us into a defence export realm, I, I think that's a a dis it risks being a distraction. Why do we want to be one of the top 10 defence exporters in the world? Well, some would say that will enrich our bottom line. I would say it will enhance our national security. That's why I would do it.